It's a beautiful spring morning here in Tasmania and I've come into the garden to do some spring planting. I have a few seeds to put in, uh, some carrot, some beetroot, also some cucumber to go into the greenhouse next to me. And also while I'm filming, I will take you for a little bit of a tour around and show you some of the things that I've already planted in the last couple of weeks to grow over spring. So in this bed here in front of me, I'm wanting to plant the main crop of carrots that I will harvest during summer. Uh, and I'll put those up this end. I'll also put in some beetroot, maybe sneak a few radishes in. We don't eat a lot of radishes, but a few are nice. So I'll sneak a few of those up that end. Now in it, I have had spinach growing over winter. It hasn't done very well because winter spinach is a bit slow, but there is still something there that is usable. So what I'm going to actually do with these plants is pull them out and got a knife here and just cut these bases off that are a little bit ratty and the center part of it can be washed up and still used so it's going to take me a little bit of time to go through and harvest this while i'm doing that i will take you for a little bit of a tour around and show you what i've already planted one of the fun things about video is that i can be in two places at the same time so down in this section, I've put out some cabbage plants. Now, there's some that were put out around about two weeks ago, some red cabbage up the back here, which are plants that I actually purchased. In the middle, there is some sugarloaf cabbage, which I grew from seed myself. On the far side are some drumhead cabbage, which have only been transplanted about a week ago. And you can see they're looking a little bit droopy in today's warm sun because they haven't quite established themselves yet. I may need to give them a little bit of water because despite the weather forecast has been promising us some rain but it hasn't eventuated. I like having the mix of cabbage types because they come slightly different times. The sugar loaf will probably come first and get used quickly. We mostly use that as a stir fry cabbage Though it's quite nice in a coleslaw as well, but not as easy to work with as a drumhead or the red cabbage. The drumhead and the red cabbage are really nice together, gives you more color and more interest in your salad. Now, all these cabbages, of course, I will need to cover later in this season, uh, usually by the beginning of November to keep the cabbage white butterfly off. Up this end of the bed, the broad beans that I planted in the middle of August and now coming through they will take off really quickly now and as soon as they come into flower they will begin setting beans so I'm really happy with those they will do just fine in Tasmania broad beans are such an easy crop to grow here in this bed I've planted along with the snow peas that you're seeing on the right I've planted some silver beet seeds and they are just coming through nicely now I will need to thin them out. I'm wanting to grow actually only about five plants along the front here. I'm spacing them a lot further than I did previously to give them more growth space. Hoping to get a better quality plant from them. These will replace the silver beet from last year, which are still growing, but are now wanting to head up to seed. In this bed, I previously had the leeks and they've now finished and I've taken them out. I've replaced them with some broccoli plants. They're not looking that happy. They probably need a little bit more water. There's the spring onions here up the back. Some of those have been used. These will keep cropping for quite a while. We'll just pull them as we need them. In between where the spaces, I've actually put in some lettuce seed. Now I've planted two types of lettuce in here. There's Simpsons and there's also an Australian yellow lettuce. They're both varieties that I haven't grown before and I'm interested to see what they come out like. They will probably come up with too many plants in each location. 
I will take out excess plants and move them around to wherever there's space in the garden and they will give us some lettuce probably late spring and early summer. The lettuce in this bed that we've been harvesting all winter is now heading up to seed. We basically harvest it by pulling leaves off, pick, choosing what we want. There's a lot here and so you're not noticing really what we've actually used very much. I will allow some of these to go to seed, others will come out and some leeks will probably go in to replace them but not for oh, till the beginning of December so it's like more than two months away. As they get taller the leaves will begin to become bitter so that's where we need a lettuce coming in in succession to replace these. On this side I've planted out some onion plants that I grew from seed myself. Now they're in little clumps which is fine because they will happily grow as a little clump of onions together. I grew these seeds in egg cartons like this, this cell part, filling that up with potting mix and or a seed raising mix to be more accurate and planting that little pinch of seed in each one. I found this to be really good as long as you have a plastic tray to support it because when they're wet they become quite soft. I unfortunately didn't film when I planted these because at the point I planted them the roots were actually coming through the egg carton itself which had broken down. I've got here a little example which uh, this I think was a cabbage which has been a bit eaten by slugs or snails or something but it gives you an idea of what happens to the egg carton. I'll bring it up close so that you can actually see it. So what has happened here is that the egg carton is completely broken down and is really soft so you can either peel it off if it's not coming through but as I said in the case of the onions you could actually see the roots coming through the bottom and look I was quite confident to just plant it intact like that and let them grow because this is going to break down and rot away very quickly. So that's an idea for you know a cheap uh, container to grow seeds in. I think it's while probably not so good for long rooted plants like uh, say a pumpkin or zucchinis or something like that that's going to want to put a deeper root in a bigger plant. It was great for these onions, fine for things like cabbages as well. So give it a go cheap well probably free and uh, easy now in this bed as you can see i've got some really nice looking red russian kale i grew these from seed myself i planted the seed in punnets in the autumn and at the beginning of winter i actually put these plants out now i'm hoping they're not going to bolt it's something i'm unsure about at this stage and I'll see how that goes. If they do, then that's going to be a bad idea because I really want these to grow right through until next spring. I've also put in some seedlings of spinach. This is Bloomsdale long standing. I didn't grow these, I actually bought them. Shortcut, look, it's a good time to put out spinach. You could put out seed right now. Spinach really is a little bit better, I think, grown from seed rather than from plants. But because I'm taking the other spinach out today, I wanted something very quickly to replace it. So having cleaned out the spinach, I've come in with a load of green waste compost and I've put a generous layer of that across the surface. Now you'll notice that I have left the large silver beet plant here it was a fantastic plant, a volunteer actually, that grew over last summer and I'm going to actually let it go to seed so it can stay there. Now I'm ready to put some furrows in to put my seed in. I like using a paling as a guide to separate those and the little hoe me is a really easy tool to run some shallow furrows for the carrot seeds and look I have a previous video on planting carrots this way it's really easy using this compost and the germination rate is really good as well so I just 
keep moving it, separating it by the, the paling spacing. So now that I've got those little furrows in, it's time to get some seed in. And look, carrot seed is fairly plentiful, but the emphasis in planting here is probably less rather than more. And I'm a bit inclined to do it in little clumps rather than continuous. Last year, this seed was very viable. Now, it will be less viable this year, but I had it really too dense and I don't really like having to thin carrots. I prefer to just get it in at the right rate to begin with. Having a clump of plants like the I've done with those onions gives them space even though they're close together to expand. Whereas if it's continuous, then they haven't got that expansion space as they grow. The variety that I'm planting here is Nantes. And I quite like that variety for our climate. It produces really well. Up this end, I've got beetroot and radish to go in. Now, if I can get this packet to open. I'm not sure how viable this radish is going to be. So I'm going to put it in because it's been open for a little while, I'm going to put it in fairly densely. We don't eat a lot of radishes, as I said before, but an occasional one is nice. Bit of crunch. And planting less more often is the better way with radishes because they don't keep in the ground for very long. They need to be harvested and eaten quite quickly. Now the beetroot, again I'm going to go for that little clumped spacing. Just putting two or three seeds together at about a, a two to three inch spacing will give me those little clumps and should allow for, for bigger and better beetroot than if they're too close together. A few too many seeds there, very easy to do. Now I find some people plant out beetroot plants, but I'm very much with all of these, think that seed direct is by far the best way to go. Those two seeds I will cover a little with the compost. They don't have to be deep. But just a shallow compost covering like this will do the job. With the carrots, however, I much prefer to come and water them in rather than put the compost over. They don't need to be deep. They just need that slight cover and the regular water. I find that the best time to come and water the carrots every day is in the evening. Watering them in the evening means that they stay nice and damp all night and even though they're drying out a little during the day, they have a good damp start in the morning. So coming back each evening until they've germinated and giving them extra water. The last seed that I'm going to plant today is my muncher cucumber seed. Now I've grown this every year for about three years now and really love this cucumber. I'm planting it here in the greenhouse. I definitely wouldn't be planting cucumber seed outside yet here in Tasmania it is still too cold I wouldn't do it for at least another month probably even better six weeks from now but here in the greenhouse it has enough warmth and it will get germinating and growing so I've kept this seed myself look I'm going to be quite generous with it because I've got plenty and I will just put in four little spots in here where I'll plant it once it comes up, I will come back and we'll put some trellising up for it to grow on, so it climbs. And I really do need to put a, get some sticks to mark these so that I know where they are. In terms of watering this, I have my irrigation system. So 
I can simply plug that in and turn on the tap and it'll all get watered. So to finish up, let's have a look at what else is happening here in the greenhouse. I've got this bed here that has some spinach and parsley in it. The spinach that I planted from seed is doing much better than the stuff that I transplanted. But because of the warmth, this spinach is coming on quite quickly. The parsley here will probably go up to seed fairly soon because it's last year's parsley. But that's okay. I need to get some of that seed. The next bed has the very earliest crop of potatoes in it. It's starting to die off and it won't be very long, probably another two, three weeks before I actually dig those potatoes. On my left here is the new bed that I created. The parsley plants that I put in it are doing quite well. I also put some seed of the Gardener's Delight cherry tomato in it. They'll need to be thinned out because I just buried the whole tomato and they have come up very thickly. But that's doing great. We've got here some broccoli. Samuel and I planted it in winter. Now it's not very far away from producing heads and so we'll soon eat that. It probably won't last so long in here because of the heat coming on, but we'll still get some cropping off it, uh, a secondary and maybe a third crop from it as well. And of course, this bed here, which has the later winter potatoes in, and that will probably be the end of October that I dig that one. So that's my early spring planting complete. The next planting in the garden that I will do will probably be at least a month away now and more towards the end of October, which are some of the warmer weather veggies that will grow in summer. But for the early spring veggies, that's done. If you haven't got them in, go and do it.